What is up everybody? So today I wanna to share with you guys a really cool little Red Sea Nano all-in-one tank that we service. Now this tank, I've been just trying to stock with as many little fish as I possibly can because I really wanna see what we can get into this tank and just put a lot of life into it. I'm not a big fan of seeing the small nano tanks with just like a couple of clownfish or something like that. Uh, I wanted to kind of make this a little bit different. So um, we're gonna go inside in a bit and we're gonna check out every single fish that I put in this tank. And um, I think there's room for more. But before we go inside and we get to that, I wanted to share with you guys a tank that I absolutely adore. It's at a local school. It's our seahorse tank and it's pretty dope. And I wanna share that with you guys first. So let's go ahead and head there now and uh, tell me what you think. So here we are and look at this tank. Talk about a planted saltwater tank. And look who we got, we got the seahorse. Probably recognizes me, thinking he's gonna get fed. How awesome is that? These guys have grown, probably tripled in size since the since we put them in here. Look great. And over here in this oyster shell, we have a sailfin blenny. Look at all this macro algae, oh, sailfin molly. Look at these guys, beautiful. Look at the iridescence on that. Really pretty fish. Look at all this algae though. I love it. I love how it's starting to just really take off. Beautiful, we got some coralline algae growing in the back. And look at all this algae growing up top here, just dangling. This is perfect for the seahorses to kind of grab onto and just hang. Really natural looking. Got a bit of cyanobacteria, not a big deal. We got some mosquito fish over here. Look at these guys, big old fat girl. She's pregnant. Uh, a bunch of them seem to be pregnant, so we'll be getting babies here pretty soon. Hopefully the seahorses don't eat them. Got a little sand sifting goby over here. But I just love this tank. It's just so natural looking here. We got some calerpa over here. Look at that growing. It's branching off and growing more. Another seahorse. Look at look how he, he, he attaches onto the macroalgae. Look how awesome that is. It's just growing. Look, that is so cool. I love it. This is a perfect seahorse tank for these guys. I'm trying to find more, but yeah. The clerper goes all the way back there. It's growing. Looks like seagrass. We got ourselves a sea cucumber up against the wall. Oh, look at this. We have a, another seahorse right there. Gripped up top, probably looking through the macroalgae, looking for any type of copepods or anything that it could eat. Another sand sifting goby. This one's a bit larger. Another seahorse up top here. So they're all accounted for. They all look great. Oh, they're so cool looking. I sit and watch this tank all day. There's just so much going on. Look how he wraps around that algae. Just sits up there, go, just searching through the algae, just looking for any little shrimp or cobalt pods that might be in there. But yeah, I'm really happy with the way, we are really happy with the way this tank is really taken off, especially the way the algae starting to really seed in the sand. Um, really a very uh, well done natural style tank and really well done for these seahorses. I'm really excited about that. We've got a bunch of little cocoa pods right there on the glass. A bunch of little critters on the glass. A bunch of natural stuff in here for the seahorses to eat as well. Yeah, really excited about this tank. And you can just see how all that algae is just going from the top and then kind of falling down there, kind of giving like a foresty effect. And that's all that areas, area that these seahorses can attach to and feel comfortable on. And oh, look at this. We got a rock flower anemone over here. Look at that. Hidden over there. This little rock flower that's growing on top of there. I haven't noticed that before. That's pretty awesome. Oh, and then here, check this out. Saw some movement here. This oyster here, see if it moves again. But this right here is a uh, oyster. 
and it just moved a second ago. You see what I'm telling you? This just looks like a rock. There's so much going on in here. I just, it's, it's crazy. The more you look in the tank, the more you discover. It's just really cool. And we're not done yet. There's a lot more that we're gonna put in this tank. Look at mama, she's huge. Wow. Oh, and there goes the male right behind her. He's noticing her. She's a big girl, holy moly. And there's our fourth seahorse right there. Hanging on another piece of algae. Kind of dipping around looking for little copepods to, to pick off. Like, look how they're all in this macro algae. You go down, you go down, you go down, and then there's another one. That is so awesome. Now, this just makes me want a seahorse tank myself. Amazing. All right, we're back here now at the customer's house, about to go inside and uh, check out this Red Sea tank with all these little cool little nano fish inside. It's, it's got some coral in there also, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's got plenty of room to grow. I wanna add some more stuff. So let's go ahead and check it out. So right when we walk in, absolutely beautiful tank, Red Sea, little nano, all set up. It's coming along nicely. And then the first fish we have is a yellow clown goby. Great fish for a nano tank, but do not get them if you have SPS corals because they will make a nest in your SPS corals. Uh, we have some reef chromis in here right now, but they will be going to the bigger tank later on. We have a high fin goby here in this little cave next to that really cool rock flower anemone. You can kind of see how small he is next to that rock flower anemone. And then up here we have a mass goby. We actually have three of these mass gobies in this aquarium uh, right now. Another great fish. And then we have this beautiful sailfin molly here. Yes, mollies can do salt water. Uh, these guys were actually bred in salt water. Uh, they, they actually show really good in salt water. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Now, another fish I don't see that much in the hobby is this cling fish up there in the back of the tank. You see them right there. Highly recommend them. Although this one's getting a bit big for this tank, so we're gonna go ahead and move them to the bigger tank up front. Also gonna feed some brine to get some more fish to come out. Now that we got the brine in the water, we got some more movement. We can get a better look of the other fish that are in this aquarium. And they should be popping their heads out here pretty soon. We have, see underneath that rock right there, we have two seminal gobies that are uh, pe poking their heads out there, getting ready to eat. This fish, uh, I just recently kind of really got an appreciation for this. Uh, these guys, they are absolutely beautiful. And once they're in a natural setting, their colors really pop. Then over here, we have not just the high fin gobies, but we're going to see a firefish. Should be, he hangs out with the high fin. Oh, there he is, purple firefish. Yeah, there's a purple firefish in that cave. So they, they're a bit shy, some of these other, some of these other fish. Um, when you get close to the tank, they hide. But they're in there. Um, these guys up top, the chromis, the clown goby, the sailfin blenny, these guys are more out in the open. But And the, and the mass gobies come out uh, a decent amount, but the seminal gobies, which I highly recommend, again, a great nano fish, not aggressive, beautiful coloration, hardy, all that. Um, these guys stay hidden a bit, but once they're comfortable, they should come out. But just look at that yellow on the side and the blue. Oh, it's just a great fish. I love the coloration on them. And uh, I, I'm really happy, in the, happy the way this tank is coming along. Uh, the fish are all doing great. Uh, the corals are looking great. Uh, it's just starting to hit its stride. We're just starting to put little frags in here and I can't wait to see the growth in this aquarium. Yes, yeah, so here's the other two mass gobies. You can see some of the rock flower anemones we have. We have this beautiful red right there. Um, it looks better in person. We have some pallies in there doing great. The flow in this tank is really good. I might try to get another small little power head in here or something, but the, the flow is decent. Everything seems to be doing good. So I, I guess if it's not broke, don't fix it. It's golden hammers. Really, uh, you can see there's some polyp movement there, but it's really looking good. This GSP is starting to take off. It's, it looks really, really healthy. Look at that dense amount of polyp extension right there. And then we got another yellow and red rock flower anemone up on the top level of the rocks. I think there's four total rock flower anemones in here. Now, I've put some zoa frags in here. Um, um, hopefully they, those do take off, but I, I, I guess given what is in here, we're gonna have to do some fragging or uh, get creative because we don't have much room for uh, much else. We got another zoa up here. 
Um, I think we're pretty much maxed out on what else we can put in here unless we get really creative, but we got a hammer curl back there and then towards the back there, that's a, oh, I love that torch. So we got two hammers and a torch here. So I think we're pretty maxed out on space. Well, I probably have to do some fragging, keep an eye on some of the corals, but um, these pallies are starting to really take off here too. And if you look at the polyps, you can see that flow hitting them just perfectly. And there's a seminal goby. But yeah, that's the, I believe that's the female. She just came out beautiful. And just coming out to say hi. Now, some of this Kenya tree I'm probably gonna take out. I use it as kind of basically as a filter. So today we will be adding another fish. This is a neon goby. Because we're gonna be removing a fish, I'm gonna add just a little guy in here. I think it'll be kind of cool. And I got him acclimated. He's in there already. And I think he fits right in. I am going to be removing the cling fish today just because he's getting a bit big uh, for this aquarium. And I'm putting him in this uh, the larger 100 and I think it's 150 gallon tank uh, with the uh, us, rest of the big fish. He's got plenty of room in here. He won't outgrow this tank. And he looks really cool already in there. Uh, <laughs> customers should be happy. All right, well, I'm wrapping up here. I'm all set. And uh, let me know what you guys think about that tank. Is it too overstocked? Do we put too much stuff in there? Or is it not enough? Do you think we can still fit a couple more fish in there? Let me know down in the comments. I'd definitely appreciate it. And if you have a suggestion for a cool fish that would get along with everybody in there, uh, also put that in the comments. I'd, I'd love to hear it. Until then, I got to get back to work. I got a bunch of jobs today. Have a good one.